was going to talk about the, the mowers. So we, there's disc mowers is the most common mower that we deal with today. So uh, what a disc mower is, is, well, look under there, but you can see the turtle. You can see the spinner with a blade on either side. There, are a manu there is a manufacturer that makes a triangle uh, spinner, puts three blades on it. Uh, but the disc mower turns at a very high RPM. We're talking 300 miles an hour is what we're rotating that at. So uh, the thing with the disc mower is efficiency and speed. All right, so we're going to drop that thing down, go across the field very fast. We're going to cut the crop clean. We want to keep sharp blades on there to cleanly cut the crop. That way we're not tearing the crop. Uh, the other thing, uh, y'all forgive me because I'm just kind of jumping all over the place here. But uh, the, the way to set the cut height on the disc mower is we're actually adjusting the angle. So we're going to roll the, the uh, cutter bar back. And that way we don't cut the grass too short. We're going to get the blade higher off the ground. So, you know, we're looking for that two and a half, three inches. Some people want to cut plus three so they can so their grass or their crop will uh, come back quicker to leave plenty of plenty of mass up there for energy and all. Uh, disc mowers, very common. We've got, this is a uh, this is very large disc mower, but you can see it's on a two point and a caddy. And so it's a transport chassis all built into one. Uh, we make, there are three point style disc mowers that actually just fasten to the three point of the tractor and then fold out here. So that again goes back to the, the weight of the tractor, knowing matching the implement to the tractor. So uh, the one thing about the three point mowers and folding out here, we go down to five and a half foot up to nearly 12 feet. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of diversity there. They're gonna go on everything from the hobby farmers has got 40 and 50 horse tractors, some small, you know, cat two implements on the back of them so they can put up their 10 or 15 bales that they want to, and all the way out to 11 six. I see people commercially cut with them. So very efficient and, and uh, they fold up compact so you can get down the road and not get out of the way. With that being said, you swing 11.6 off the side of the tractor, you've got to have plenty of ballast on that side. So make sure you have plenty of weight in the tractor. Uh, three point hitch uh, cutters, you can get conditioners in them. We offer one with a rubber on rubber uh, conditioner and a tying conditioner. Now we don't sell a lot of them, particularly in your area. Most people are going to go to, if there are running a conditioner, it's going to be a pull type. So with that being said, when you do move into a pull type, we don't uh, currently offer a pull type non-conditioner unit. So all of ours have conditioners in them. So when I talk about conditioners, I'm talking about either rubber on rubber rollers that's got teeth that intermesh or steel on steel or rubber on steel or tine conditioners and then flail conditioners. So there's multiple kinds of them. To understand the difference, we'll, we'll jump in there just a little bit. So rubber on rubber, you, it's a, like a tire. It's a tire carcass basically, right? So you get that rubber on rubber and you get that chevron pattern intermeshing. So you're gonna crush that crop the full length of it. So why is crushing the crop important? Anybody? Speeds up drying. When we speed up drying, we're improving the, the relative feed value, old term. I know some of y'all are going to get on to me, but we're, we're improving that relative feed value. We're, we're, we're drying it down. We're not bleaching the sugars. We're not losing the sugars and carbohydrates out of there. So we want to have the proper conditioner for the proper crop. Okay. So rubber on rubber does a, a good job uh, crushing that stem down the length of it. All right. One thing rubber on rubber suffers with is if you get into a wet, if you took a rubber on rubber out today, the crop would probably wrap it, right? Rubber on rubber is not real good there. So we've got, then we've got steel on rubber. So then you kind of get the best of both worlds and I'm gonna talk about steel in a minute, but uh, you still have to consider that you're gonna wrap that rubber roller there. And if you've got rocks or debris out there, you're gonna take a, a risk on uh, ripping a chunk out of that rubber on rubber. So steel on steel, <laughs> that's my preference. That's we, as Massey as Agco, we sell the most of those steel on steel. We put those things in alfalfa, which uh, you said was uh, very similar to the perennial peanuts here. Concept why the concept of, uh, concept of cutting, baling alfalfa and okay. perennial peanut in terms of leaf loss. And all yeah, that. so that steel on steel, what we've discovered out west in uh, alfalfa is it does a very good job crimping, consistently crimping the stem on that alfalfa and uh, very minimal leaf loss. So a flail or a tine conditioner, you're just gonna beat the snot out of it, right? And you're gonna lose all your leaf off of it. So we have to really watch that, but the steel on steel does a very good job. So when we talk about steel on steel, there's multiple, you know, we can set our, our row gap. So that's how close our, gap, or our rollers are together. We can move the timing so we can move it. So if we get it closer to one or the other and we can change the aggressiveness at that point, you know, and you get it too quiet, it's really gonna chew, uh, chew up the crop. And then we can change the tension. So it's got a giant spring that holds those rollers together. So when a crop moves through a crop mat, it's gonna push them apart, right? So you tighten that spring down, it's gonna pull it back together. So that's where you get your conditioning. So with a steel on steel, you actually get a double conditioning. 
So don't get on to me here, but you, you're going to get that crimping action and those steel on steel, they're actually turning at a very high rate of speed and you're going to see it strip that crop through there and you're going to see a lot of damage to the wax on the outside of that crop. It's going to strip some wax off of it. That's going to aid in drying down that leafy broad, that, uh, broad leafy grass also. And then uh, let's go on to the, the flail. So a flail, uh, very popular. One reason I think this is popular is because you actually physically see the stem sticking up like broken bamboo sticking up out there. But if you really get down and look at the crop, if you had a stem alpha or a, a fescue out there, if you tried to look at it, you're not going to see consistent breaks or consistent crushes down that stem. Right? So you're looking for consistency. That way you get even and efficient dry down. So the flail, yes, they're out there. They do a good job. But just, you know, if you want to get down and do a, a minute look or a finite look at what they're doing, uh, you know, it's basically impellers or tees just at a high rate of speed, just thrashing the crop when it comes out the back. And then, then the fourth one is a tine. So a tine, it looks like a very heavy baler pickup tine, almost like the tether tines. It'll be larger, bigger around, and it's going to rake the material, rake the crop through a stationary set of combs. And what that's going to do is strip that, that waxy outer layer there also. So disc mowers if you ever go out there to a disc mower or disc mower conditioner and you don't see just a particularly a conditioner and you just don't see a river of crop coming out the back of it if it doesn't look like a waterfall a consistent waterfall what's happening is when he's cutting the grass is building up on the cutter bar the material is building up on the cutter bar and then it's damming and then it's getting you know enough of it's building up then the conditioner is grabbing it and throwing it through there so these machines are not like the old sickle bars that we're used to pulling you know back in the day that you know four or five mile an hour was tops depending on what kind of material is in how new the the uh, sections were these machines are can you ride the tractor Okay, that legitimately. So these are seven, eight mile an hour machines. That's, that's on the low side. And the reason we have to do that is to move that crop across the bar because there's nothing moving that. Yes, there may be some lifters, you know, some little, looks like uh, angle iron bolted to the top of that uh, spinner, that disc. But at the end of the day, we've got to move that crop across yeah. the top of the cutter bar. So, so just watch that, you know, you need to be uh, mindful of the conditions when you're buying a disc mower.